In this lesson, we want to talk about linear and angular speed. So previously, we talked about how to solve motion word problems using our distance formula. So that's the D for distance is equal to R, which is the rate of speed, times T, which is the amount of time traveled. So we're going to relate this formula to linear speed, which we'll talk about in a moment. Basically, if we know our rate of speed and we know our time traveled, we know our distance. So for example, if I plugged in 80 miles per hour here, and I plugged in, let's say three hours here, what would be my distance traveled? So we sit in a car, we're moving at 80 miles per hour, we do this for three hours, we know that we would do 80 times three or 240, this would be 240 miles. Okay, so this is the distance traveled. Now let's suppose we didn't know the rate of speed. But we did know the distance traveled, and we knew the amount of time it took to travel that distance. So now what I could do is I could solve this formula. If I had D is equal to R times T, I could solve it for R, right? And I could plug in and find out what R is. So this would give me, this cancels, the rate of speed is equal to the distance traveled divided by the amount of time it takes to travel that distance. So let's erase this, and let's think about these numbers again, just as a simple example. So suppose my distance again is 240, and this is going to be in terms of miles. Let's suppose my time again is three hours. So now if I have this information given, what's my rate of speed? Again, 240 divided by three would give me 80, okay? And in terms of units, miles and then hours, you'd have miles per hour. So miles per hour, okay? So very easy to understand this concept. Just think about all the times that you've traveled on a road trip and you've calculated how far you're gonna be at what time. Okay, so let's erase this, and I'm just going to drag this up here, and I'll talk about how this is related to linear speed now. So for linear speed, let's look at our little diagram here. I want you to suppose that some point P, okay, so this is my point P, it's going to move at a constant speed along a circle with this radius of R, okay, and with a center of O, okay? So the measure of how fast the position of P is changing is known as the linear speed, okay? So instead of R... We're going to use V, okay, for velocity, and instead of D, now because we're traveling along a circle, remember, when you think about the distance or the length that you're traveling on a circle, this is the arc length, right? So we use S for this, so now I'm going to have S over T, okay? So that's how these two guys are related. Instead of R, we use V for velocity. Instead of D for distance, we're going to use S for the arc length that's traced by this point P at the time t. To put this in more simple terms, the linear speed is just the speed at which a point on the outside of some object travels in a circular path around the center of that object. Now when we talk about angular speed, we're talking about how fast the measure of the angle is changing. So again, if I think about this point here, p, right, so this is the terminal side of the angle, pob. If I'm rotating P around this circle, the measure of the angle is changing, okay? So how fast the measure of that angle changes, that's our angular speed, okay? So this is given by the formula. You're going to use this letter omega, okay? And I'm terrible at writing it, but this is the Greek letter omega, and it's equal to theta, okay, which is the angle measure in radians, divided by T, which is your time. Now, there's one more thing I want to talk about before we get to the problems. You might want to make a little substitution, okay? Based on what you're given in the problem, you might want to make a little substitution here. And instead of saying S the arc length, remember the arc length S is equal to your theta, okay, your angle theta that's in radians, times your radius, that length, R, okay? So if we plug in there, we could say V is equal to, you would have your theta times R, okay, over T. Now, we know from fractions that I could really rewrite this as R times your theta over T. So now we can make a little substitution because theta over T, okay, is this guy right here, okay? It's the Greek letter omega, which again is our angular speed. So I can put this as my angular speed here. So the linear velocity or the linear speed, however your book says it, is going to be equal to the length of your radius, times your angular speed. So let's go ahead and look at an example. So the tires of a bicycle have radius 15 inches and are turning at the rate of 230 revolutions per minute. How fast is the bicycle traveling in miles per hour? Okay, so the first thing you want to do for a problem like this is calculate the angular speed. So again, I'm going to try to make the omega, okay? And this is equal to, again, theta over t. 
Okay, so the first thing you might notice is that you're given this rate here of 230 revolutions per minute. Okay, when you think about one revolution, it's one complete circle or 360 degrees or two pi radians. Since we're working with radians here, we want to put two pi up here. Okay, this is one complete revolution or one complete circle. We have 230 of these. So I'm just going to multiply this by 230. Okay, so again, this is one complete circle or one complete revolution or one complete rotation, however you want to think about that. Okay, so it's two pi, okay, or 360 degrees, if you want to relate it back to degrees, then we have 230 of these guys. So that's why I'm multiplying by 230. Now, I'm going to divide this by the time is given as per minute. So per minute means one minute there. Okay, so this is in terms of radians. So you can write this as radians, okay, right here. So this is 2 pi times 230, or you could say 460, 460 pi radians per minute. Now, the next thing we want to do is think about the time units that we want. It's going to ask for this in terms of miles per hour. We have radians per minute, okay? So we want to convert this to radians per hour. So let me erase this so we have a little bit more room to work because this can get quite messy. So let's move this down a little bit. And I want to multiply this now by what? I want hours in the denominator. I want one single hour because I want per hour. Okay. So if you always think about what you want, go ahead and put that there first. And then how do I get there? I want minutes to cancel. What's the relationship between hours and minutes? Well, 60 minutes, 60 minutes is equal to one hour. OK, so now this is basically equal to one. OK, so what I can do is I can cancel this with this and I'm left with the units that I want in my denominator. So let's go ahead and multiply 460 by 60, which is twenty seven thousand six hundred. Don't forget the pi there. It's easy to forget it. Pi. And then you have radians. OK, and then per one hour. OK, so that's your angular speed. 27,600 pi radians per hour. Okay, so let's erase this. I don't need these intermediary steps anymore. And let's just bring this up here. And I'm just going to say it's 27,600 pi, and then I'll put radians per hour. Okay, I'm just going to abbreviate there. Now, let's think about now the linear speed, okay, in terms of miles per hour. So how are we going to get this? So V is your linear speed. Remember the formula we looked at when we plugged in here, we said that we could do the radius times the angular speed. So if we come back down here, the angular speed, I'm going to put 27,600 pi. Okay. And then you can go per hour. Let's put this down here. And then times, what's the radius? Well, the radius is going to be given to us here as 15 inches. So 15 inches right here. If I multiply this out, and let me scroll down to get some room going. If I multiply this out, I'm going to get that 414,000 pi, okay? And then we'll say inches per one hour, okay? This is not what I want, though, because I want it in terms of miles per hour, and I have it in terms of inches per hour, okay? So I've got to do another unit conversion, and this is where these things get kind of tough. So if you know the relationship between inches and feet, 12 inches equals one foot, and then you can convert from feet to yards and then from yards to miles. I'm gonna shorten this up. So the relationship between inches and miles, 63,360 inches is equal to one mile. So what I can do, I want inches to go away. So I'm gonna put 63,000, and then it's gonna be 360 inches, okay? I want that to go away, so I want that in the denominator, and I'm gonna put one mile in the numerator. Again, one mile is equal to 63,360 inches. So this is really a fraction that has a value of one. Okay. So this would cancel with this. So those units are gone. So now this is going to be in terms of miles per hour. Okay. So what you'd want to do is really just take 414,000 pi. Okay. And then divide it by this number here, 63,360. It's going to be an approximation because you're going to get a decimal number. But if you wanted to simplify this first, you could divide this by 720. OK, and you could divide this by 720 and that would give you 575 and this would be 88. OK, so you could really write this as 575 pi miles, OK, per 
your 88 hours. But again, this is kind of useless because we want miles per hour. So if you punch this up on a calculator, you could say that this is about 20.5. This will be in terms of miles per hour. Okay, so that's our linear speed. So let me just erase all of this. So to answer this with a nice little sentence, I'll say the bike. The bike is traveling at about, because again, this is an approximation, 20.5. And this is in terms of miles per hour. So the bike is traveling at about 20.5 miles per hour. All right, let's take a look at one more problem. So at a local high school, Max rides his cart around a circular track at two revolutions per minute. If the radius of the circular track is 150 meters, how fast is Max's cart traveling in meters per second? Okay, so a similar setup, I'm going to use omega, once again, to say it's theta over t, right? So this is my angular speed. So what is theta in this case? Well, we have two revolutions, and this is per minute. So down here, this would be, let me put t as one minute and get that out of the way. And I'm just going to abbreviate it. For theta, it's 2 times 2 pi. Again, one revolution or one time completely around a circle is 2 pi radians or 360 degrees. So you have 2 pi okay, times you've got two of these revolutions. So 2. So this would be 4 pi, 4 pi radians, radians per minute. Okay, so that's your angular speed. Now we want this in terms of seconds, but let's convert this in a moment because it's going to be a little bit easier for us. We know that with the linear speed, okay, if we're trying to find out how fast Max's car is traveling in meters, meters per second, well, what I do is I take this guy right here, okay, and I plug it in, I plug it in, and I multiply it by the radius, okay? So let's do that. So we have 4 pi over 1 minute times the radius, it tells us it's 150 meters, so it's 150 meters meters. Okay. And so let me scroll down and get some room going here. Okay. So four times 150, we know is 600. So this ends up being 600 pi meters. Okay. Per one minute. So the last thing we want to do is get this in terms of seconds. Okay. And the reason I waited here is because you have to divide by 60 and 600 divided by 60 is pretty easy to do. Okay. So that's why I waited. So you can multiply this now by, I want seconds in the denominator because I want it as per second. And there's 60 seconds in one minute. Let me slide this down. I kind of ran over a little bit. Let me slide this down and I'll put one minute up here so that it will cancel. Again, you want to, and let me abbreviate this so that's consistent. You want to put these across from each other again so they cancel. So this will cancel with this. And I'm just left with seconds now, right? I'll have meters per second. So 600 divided by 60 is going to give me 10. So this would be 10 pi meters per second, or you could say it's about, you could say it's about 31.4 meters, okay, meters per second, okay? So to answer this little word problem, I'll say that Max's cart, Max's cart is traveling at about, again, it's an approximation, 31.4 meters per second. Okay, so Max's cart is traveling at about 31.4 meters per second.